independent thought, independent life. This is Chad Benson. State of Minnesota Plaintiff versus Derek Michael Chauvin, Defendant. Verdict, count one. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April, 2021, at 1.44 p.m. Verdict count two. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count two, third degree murder, perpetrating an eminently dangerous act, find the defendant guilty. Verdict count three. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count three, second degree manslaughter, culpable negligence, creating an unreasonable risk, find the defendant guilty. There it is. Judge Cahill reading it out yesterday. Derek Chauvin. Guilty, all three charges, uh, faces a lot of time in prison. Will he do that much time? Because that's where this is going to go next. I don't know. But did anything change? You know, that's the thing. Are we moving in an area where there's going to be change, right? Are we moving in an area where there, at the end of the day, I think he got what he deserved. Like he was guilty. Uh of definitely killing George Floyd. But the entire thing to me is, okay, here's a conversation we can start to have now. Let's let's start to have a conversation. Let's start having a conversation. Let's start moving in, in a direction. You know, yesterday, I, everybody's like, do you think he's guilty? I'm like, of course I think he's guilty. Do I think he's going to be found guilty? Of course I do. But the reaction by a lot of people, even people I know, Right? White people were surprised because they thought, "Well, this is this is uh, this is he was guilty. The, 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 he was guilty. Yeah, didn't you think he was? Yeah, but I just thought, you know, like somehow, like people are going to get back in there and the jury room, and they're going to say, you know what? Okay, we know how this goes. Right? He's a cop. Uh, he's not guilty. We all we all get that. So why we're here, you know." Uh, it's just he, he's a white guy, right? Like that. He, he just killed a black guy. It's no big. That's that's the way I think a lot of people think that white people think. Because you see it splashed on the news that there's an idiot here and an idiot there and that somehow everybody's the same and it's vice versa. It's not. It's not that way. Cops, a majority of cops. What do they think? This guy was guilty. Talk to cops on a daily basis. They're going to be in here a little bit later today. They're doing their 5-0 show. They take me out shooting. Kind of like it. Don't have to pay for bullets. Good guys. They thought he was guilty. Absolutely. Maybe I'm naive. Maybe I just look and I say, he's guilty. Human beings can do the right thing. They can see things. They can take the evidence. They can put it all down in, in, in you know on their papers. They sit down and start going over every single thing. And they could do the right thing. And the majority of times, they will. Are there times when when things, for whatever reason, don't go the way that they should or the way that people think they should? Yes. But I understand some hesitation by people. But I didn't think the jury was going to get this one wrong. No, I didn't. And they came back with guilty on all three. What do you think of the uh, verdict that was decided here? It was necessary. Too much violence. Too much chaos. It, it was necessary. Do you think that the jury had a fair shot with everything going on? With all the news out there and the reaction from around the world, it's hard to believe there was going to be any other verdict. Which is also something that we should talk about. How much of that played into the jury's mind? You'd have to think a decent amount. People out there saying you better convict or if. You better do this or if. It, 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 and you heard like some of the expert witnesses. They've had their houses uh, you know, uh, egged and, and, and attacked. They've had their, their families threatened. So there, there, there was a lot playing into this. And we can't have mob rule. Can we just say this, right? We can't have mob rule. That can't and shouldn't happen. That aside, I think he was guilty. Now, how much time he does, I don't know. That'll be the next thing. But now it's time to start having a real conversation. So we do this every time there's an issue. We say, can we have real conversations? Right? You know, there's that uh, Emmanuel Acho's, you know, uncomfortable conversation with the black man. I watch it. Is it uncomfortable? 
you know, I, I don't know. Are you uncomfortable with things? Can you talk about things? I could talk about things, but I can only talk about things coming from Chad, my perspective, my life, my thoughts. I can't put myself in other positions. I can do the best I can to go, okay, let me see if I can see it from your side of the street or put myself in your shoes, but I don't know. Now's the time to have conversation. If we want meaningful movement in a direction where we bridge the gap, where there is more opportunities, where there is more sense of trust between law enforcement and people of color, then yeah, we should have that conversation. But we all have to be honest, and we won't do that because we live in America where, where right now, in fact, not just America, but in the Western world where feelings will override facts, feelings matter more than anything else, and you don't get anywhere with feelings. You just don't. You're not going to get to the next place with feelings. Feelings can start a conversation, but if you decide, hey, we're not going to talk about any of the facts, well, guess what? It's, I mean, that's the way, you know, one thing about trials is you try to bring the facts in it, right? Those with the better facts should win. Sometimes it's those with the better story. Can I tug at your heartstrings? Can I, can I, can I do that? You got to be able to tell a story, but you got to have the facts first and foremost. If you could tell a great story surrounded by the facts, you're going to do great. You appeal to their humanity, but then you do what? You hit them with the sensibility that most humans nowadays don't seem to have. Sensible enough to go, I can look at these facts, realize that, yes, this happened, A, B, C, whatever it is, and I can discern from there, take it and run with it. They got it right yesterday. They did. Nothing burned. Well, I'm sure Portland, something's always burning in Portland. Somebody's always mad about something. Usually it's because the kids want to, you know, stay on their mom and dad's cell phone bill for the rest of their life and never have to get a job, and they're angry, the Antifa kids. Uh, but the reality is, is, okay, so what's next? What's next? Um, basically just that this is... This is something different. This is com this is new. Um, I was just because we we've been here so many times before, and, and honestly, the first thing that I really thought about was the Rodney King situation, and I thought it could have been something similar to that, just because we all saw that too. And this feels like just feels like we can breathe. This feels like something new. It's a, a hopefully a new day in America. Every day is a chance at a new day. It's what you do with those chances. And when you have politicians who are more concerned about how they look, how they can exploit things, case in point, maybe the worst exploitation of them all. And if you guys have not heard Nancy Pelosi and her bizarre martyrdom of George Floyd, it is insane. Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. For being there to call out to your mom, how, how heartbreaking was that? Call out for your mom, I can't breathe. But because of you, thousands, millions of people around the world who came out for justice, your name will always be synonymous with justice. And now we have to make sure justice prevails in the sentencing. Thank you for sacrifice. You guys act like he... Was nailed to a cross? Oh, shit. Being honest. That he jumped in front of a bullet? No. He was killed. By a cop that, for whatever the reason, whatever the, the, the thought process was, we may never know. But in saying that, thank you for sacrificing. You act like if he had a choice, he'd have been like, yeah, I'll do it. He'd be like, no, I want to live. <laughs> I don't care how much money my family got. I don't care about any of that stuff. i got a kid. I want to be around to see her grow up. No. That right there was just like, I don't know what was worse. That or what the Raiders tweeted. If you guys didn't see what the Raiders tweeted, Mark Davis, who is taking 
full credit and I guess full blame. Tweeted out from the Raiders official account, I can breathe. What? <laughs> oh, man, I tell you. It is a, it, it, looking back, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, as, as I do right now, like, and, and we'll talk a bit about this later. I, you know, my mother and I were talking about this last, last, last night. I was right in the middle of the Rodney King riots, uh, working, doing a bunch of stuff. I mean, I was there. We were carrying guns, trying to protect ourselves. And, and we'll break down how the whole thing happened because I don't think people realize the, if, you're, if you don't understand what it actually was about, how they got to that point. And what took place, but also the aftermath on it, it is, it's crazy. It really is. But I think yesterday, justice was served. He had his opportunity in front of court of his peers to be heard. He chose the fifth. He let the expert witnesses and his defense team do everything they could for him. At the end of the day, they came back with a guilty verdict. Now it's on to sentencing. We'll see where we go. Is it a new day in America? First of all, it's always a great day in America. It's not always, it is always a great day in America. Secondly, that being said, it's only a new day if we decide we're going to move forward, be honest, and try to solve problems. Or if we're going to just take these problems and continue to placate some people and to profit off it, then you know what? Then it's no different today on this Wednesday than it was yesterday. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. We got fun stuff. It's not going to be all about this today. Rattlesnake barbecue tongs. Don't do it. Pat Sajak (laughs) inadvertently gives the person the puzzle. Wait till you hear this. A lot of stuff to get to. It's uh, and it's crazy too because I'm going to talk about somebody who passed away, and you're going to think to yourself, "That was how long ago?" Man, time can fly. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. Let's talk about it, right? Like I talk about all kinds of stuff on the program, and I will tell you this right now: home title lock. If you guys have no idea what this is, know this. Your home's title is out there for the world. Cyber criminals can steal things so easy nowadays. We hear about identity theft. Do you realize that stealing people's deeds to their homes is easier and far more profitable than stealing people's identities? Because to to get the kind of money that they would want to get, you have to go through so many where this is, hey, we've got your title, we've signed it to ourselves, and you've got hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity in your home. We could take it all and you'll never know about it until it's too late. Home Title Lock is here to protect, here to make sure that that kind of thing doesn't happen. So what do you do? You go to HomeTitleLock.com, you register your address, you check it out. If anything happens with your title, you'll be alerted to it immediately so you can put a stop to it before it starts. 30 days free protection, HomeTitleLock.com, code radio, HomeTitleLock.com, code radio. Chad Benson Show. One Mexican heartburn. Why don't you mugs grow up? The Chad Benson Show, where independent a la carte thinkers have a seat at the table and a voice in the dialogue. I'll have what she's having. This is Chad Benson. Last week, regulators paused the use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine pending an investigation of the six reported cases of possible side effects out of the nearly 7 million doses given. According to a new poll, most Americans say pausing the vaccine was the right call, and one in five people say they're still unlikely to get a COVID shot. That's a similar percentage to polls from back in January. Yeah, I think we need to come to the realization that that 20 percent of people, for whatever reason, majority of it is politics. They're not moving off that. They're not. Now, maybe six months from now. They're at a Walgreens chance to get a flu shot and a covid shot. They might take that. But at this moment in time, the thought process is 
We're going to keep hammering how safe this is. Hammering. It's not about that. They don't trust the government. I think they probably trust what's in the vaccine makers more than they trust the government. So I don't know what people think is going to happen. Well, we got to get to this percent. We got to get to that percent. We may never get to that percent the way that people would like us to. It may be through that herd immunity we've been talking about where the actual herd has to catch a portion of this. May take a bit. Doesn't mean we stop doing what we're doing. Doesn't mean we stop living our lives. I was watching yesterday, as I tend to do, golf. And they were interviewing uh, this weekend that the golf is uh, it's a team competition where it's like you and another partner. And it's, it's, kind of, it's really actually it's fun to watch. Uh, but Tony Finau, one of the best golfers in the world, says, well, you know, it's kind of this is I feel like this is kind of the new normal. And this is how we're going to live. And I'm like, no, it's not how we're going to live. Wrong. This is not how we're going to live. Period. Case closed. End of story. It's not how we're going to live. We're not going to live walking around with masks all day. But they they don't really help the way you think. Do they help if you do everything correctly? Yeah. How many of you are wearing a mask you've been wearing for weeks, days, months? God knows how long. But times you wash that, really? You know what's sitting next to me? My mask. My mask fell on the floor yesterday, and that was probably the cleanest place it's been. It's been my pocket. It's in my golf bag. Washed it a few times, but I've got my other KN95 mask, which also, I'm not buying brand new ones every day or every couple day. I'm just not doing it. Most people aren't. I love how people, like, they'll lecture you and then they'll walk around with the same damn mask. I'm like, you, you, yeah, I wash it every, I wash it every 10 minutes. I pretty much wash it, like, all the time. I can't stop washing it. In fact, I live in the water with it. Shit. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show. Feel very placebo effect. Does it make you feel good? Well, that's all that matters. This is not the new normal. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. I would not call today's verdict justice, however, because justice implies true restoration. But it is accountability, which is the first step towards justice. And now the cause of justice is in your hands. I urge everyone to continue the journey to transformation and justice. It's in your hands now. Okay. What does that mean? Keith Ellison. I'm curious. Okay, it's not justice. No, yesterday it wasn't. You know what justice, you know what it was yesterday? It was the process. It worked. The system's not perfect. The system has been slanted for a long time. First against people of color, and more recently against people who don't have the means There's still work that needs to be done. By the way, there's work that needs to be done in everything in life. Always looking to improve. Greatest tennis player practicing. Tiger Woods, right? Tiger Woods. Greatest golfer probably ever. It's hard to just be, well, you know, uh, you know what he's doing? when? Well, not now, but you know what he was doing every day? He's practicing because he thinks I can get better. I'm not there. I'm always trying to improve. Michael Jordan, always trying to improve. Every great artist, every musician. Everybody who does anything, that includes us as human beings, we're always trying to improve. We can always improve. This was a verdict. The system worked. He had his day in court. 
By the way, that was two and a half, three weeks. Two and a half, three weeks. Let's give you, so when you think about the OJ trial, right? So the OJ trial, for those of you guys, it was 11 months. You think about that. So the jury was actually sworn in on November 9th, 1994. Opening statements were made January 25th. The verdict was announced on October 3rd. The jury was sworn in on the 6th of November. The Rodney King case. That took a while. Took an absolute, I mean, that was just not, so when Rodney King was beaten, March 3rd, 1991, pulled over, highway patrol, speeding, L.A., he admitted, he had admitted, tried to elude authorities, he'd been drinking, was on probation for robbery, pulled over, we know what took place. Four officers, right? Stacy Coons, sergeant, officer Theodore Brazino, Lawrence Powell, and Timothy Wynn. All of them pled not guilty. March 21st, 1991. So this happened on March 3rd. The video came out not too long after that. And then they were arrested and they pled not guilty. November of that year, they decide, hey, they we don't think they can get a fair trial, so we're going to move it to the crackerest place we can find. That would be Simi Valley. They do. April 29th is when they finally finish their deliberations. So they move it to there. It was like five months. This was two and a half, three weeks. Two and a half, three weeks. Then that night, the time, the mayor, Bradley, said this is ridiculous. Governor, Governor Pete Wilson echoes the sentiments at the time. May 1st, third day of riots. May 3rd, citywide curfew was enacted. So think about this. Started April 29th at night, May 3rd. Four and a half days later, they finally go, hey, we're going to have a curfew. I worked those riots. It was awful. It was horrible. It was absolutely awful being out there. Watching, first of all, human beings who, for whatever reason, decided we're so mad and so angry that this is what we're going to do. It started on an intersection and the beating of a white truck driver who they dragged out and just crushed him, probably should have killed him. The fact that he survived was amazing. And then it just escalated from there. But being out there in the midst of it all, right? I was in Watts. I was in Long Beach. I was in Compton. I was in uh, Los Angeles because my mother's company was out there. We were boarding stuff up. My mom, I'm like 21. I'm, 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 I'm recovering from knee surgery back here in America. And my mom's basically saying, all right, here, here's a gun. You're going to go out with these guys. We need to go do all this stuff. We're having banks call us, all these things. We're having the city calls. Can you come put stuff up for us? Can you come protect our stuff? And it was just surreal. You're watching people out there destroying their neighborhood. We're a long way away from that day. You think about it, right? It was March of 91 when that happened. April it came down of 92. It was 30 years removed from that. And I will tell you this right now. There are places in Long Beach, Watts, Compton area, still not rebuilt, never will be. Never will be. It was, I'm glad cooler heads prevailed. And I was worried last night about that. 
And people are like, well, why would you be worried? They got, and I said, let me tell you something. Why would I be worried? A, human beings. It only takes one idiot to do something stupid. The majority of the people that were out there doing these things since, since last year aren't interested in justice for George Floyd or anybody. They're interested in the Nike store and the Apple store. But why would I be worried? We live in a country where if your team has a chance to win a Super Bowl, an NBA title, a Major League Baseball title, whatever it is, they start running PSA ads a few days before saying, please, I know you're going to be excited. Don't burn our city down. Don't burn our city down. Don't do it. Please, please, don't do it. Detroit, All Hallows' Eve. (laughs) Come on now. Not that you would know much of Detroit is burnt down. There's just, there's a lot going on. But justice? People feel that there's justice? What's justice look like? And, and, uh, and producer Phil and Anthony, I were, look, for a lot of people, this was a start. But if it's not 40 years, they're going to think it's injustice. If it's not 40 years, they're going to think he wasn't worth anything. This verdict is not justice. Frankly, I don't even think we call it full accountability because there are multiple officers that were there. It wasn't just Derek Chauvin. And I also don't want this moment to be framed as this system working, working. Because it's not working. Don't listen to politicians, right or left. They're not interested in actually solutions. The better that we're divided, the more that we're divided, the better it is for both parties to continue to do what they do, which is pit us against each other. And in doing so, what? Profit off of it. Doesn't work. This is No, the system's not perfect. Nobody ever said it was perfect. Nobody ever said it was perfect. But within moments, they're all out there talking about how, well, this isn't enough. This isn't that. This is, And you just sit there and you shake your head because you're not interested in any solutions. You're not interested in moving forward. You're not interested in a better conversation about anything. You're interested in dividing and conquering. And mostly what you're interested in is conquering people from their money and their vote to keep them in power. It's not good. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter Tweet at us, text the program. I'm going to play something for you guys, and I found out about this today, and I thought to myself, my goodness, where's it gone? April 21st, 2016. Now, the breaking news that the pioneering musician Prince has died at the age of 57. The world's stunned. We were told Prince might have been battling the flu. Turns out he overdosed on the synthetic opioid fentanyl. In the five years since his death, there were a few battles over control of his estate, which is now focused on pumping out music from Prince's vault. There's been some new stuff several reissues, and in July we'll see a whole unreleased album. Welcome to America. Welcome to America. Recorded in 2010, then shelved for reasons unknown. Yeah. Producer Phil, how many songs do you think he has hidden? I think it's probably well into the thousands. I would say well into the multiple thousands. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's always been thought that he's got four or five, six thousand songs that hadn't even been touched as far as, like he's gone, because he had a studio. He's just going to record. So he may have You know, on any given, he may have gone on, uh, you know, like recording binges for weeks and months and for years, too. We're not talking about like, oh, but think about this. If you're 25 year old Prince at the height of your superstardom, you've already been recording for several years and you've got stuff that you don't use. And then you roll that out over the next almost 30 years, 32 plus years, even if you're doing 100 songs a year, I mean, you're looking at, Probably three, four thousand plus songs. Can you believe it's five years ago? When I hear that, I'm like, oh my, five years ago? That is insane. It felt like it's just like two, three years ago, if that. Same thing with uh you know you hear about Michael Jackson's death. You're like, how long ago was that again? You're like, what? That's huh? Really? That long? Feel old, right? It's the Macaulay Culkin thing. <laughs> You guys want to feel old? I turned 40. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Somebody said that yesterday on YouTube. 
I thought you were a young, hip guy. You're old. <laughs> First of all, I never said I was hip, right? But uh, it's the beard. The beard may- makes me look way older, but I like my beard. It's got gray in it. And you know what? I don't really care. I have no hair and a beard, and I don't care that it's got some gray in it. I don't. I think a lot of people do, and I always feel – you can always tell when somebody dyes their beard because you're like, that isn't even – that's not even close. First of all, your hair when you had it, like for some people, it's not even that color. I won't dye my beard, though. I'm not that vain, right? You know, I'm not that vain. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. My pillow has slippers. They're called My Slippers. 60-day money-back guarantee. One-year limited warranty. It's got three different, like, levels for for the slippers you have moccasin style and slip on but first you get the my pillow patented fill right so you got that then you got the memory foam then comes the new gel made out of usa soybeans it's awesome too man you put your feet in there you're like oh so when i especially when i'm like i play because you guys know i play a lot of golf but i also work out a lot and you know as you get a little bit older uh, you know you, you, everybody knows this your feet hurt you're like, what? Why, 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 why I, I didn't do anything. Well, these things are amazing. They're comfortable, right? They're suede, got the faux fur inside. You're going to love these things. So you go to mypillow.com, use the promo code Benson. Mypillow.com, promo code Benson. You get 40% off, several colors to choose from. Check out all the other great stuff they have there. You will love it. It is awesome. My pillow.com promo code benson to get the my slippers 40 percent off look at all the other stuff they have get these deep discounts my pillow.com promo code benson chad benson show deep states uh, no deep doo-doo yeah the chad benson show yikes well, uh, I'm, I'd rather be standing here than there. <laughs> did you hear what you said? I, I did, right after I said it. <laughs> I, I, don't, I wonder how many people at home caught it. <laughs> but in setting up the thing, you know, there weren't many letters up there. And I said, I'd rather be here than there, quite frankly, <laughs> which was the puzzle. But it goes to show you that people are concentrating and, that, and, and not paying any attention to me. And he, and he didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, he didn't get it. So... That's funny. Like for all the chaos around, you know, you know, what Pat Seg Jack says and tweets and all of the stuff. And is it time for him to go? And, you know, th- and he was there doing his thing and <laughs> he s- gave the guy it. But he wasn't uh, paying attention like the way that you should, because subconscious- you're sitting there focusing. You're not really looking, you know, and he- listening to what. He's saying in in you're you're hearing it, but you're not taking it in. And the guy missed it. He just out and out missed it. Missed it. It's just like oh oh, just their laugh a little bit. Uh oh, you missed it there. Uh oh, that's not good for you, sir. Now you're going to be the butt of everybody's joke. It's not very nice. It's just kind of the way it is, kids. I don't think anybody, if you didn't, if you were so hyper focused, and we live in a day and age where so many things get by us. There was that. Uh, Do you see when? Uh, who's the guy that plays Superman this week? I forget his name. He. Uh, this was. This was awesome. This was like a perfect way that we live our lives in in today, right? Like we always joke about. Well, uh, you know, Superman. Like nobody knows who Superman is. So Henry Cavill. He one time he dressed up like Clark Kent and he stood in front of the Superman thing at a movie theater. People walked by him, nobody recognized him. I'm like, well, Clark Kent works, I guess. But that just goes to show you sometimes when you're inside your own head and for a lot of people inside of their own, you know, their phones, you just don't pay attention. You don't. 323 538 2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Speaking of movies. This is as telling as I think it gets in the modern world that we live in. If you're the movie industry and you're trying to figure out how do I compete, also the television industry, 
You know, I keep saying that, you know, uh, if you want to see like all this cancel culture and all the stuff that goes on and all this craziness and chaos and why some of these people on television are, you know, always trying to get people on YouTube in trouble. Let me tell you something. Your competition is YouTube. Like Steven Crowder crushes his numbers, crush a lot of what you see on cable. But Gen Z, their favorite activity goes like this. 26% of Gen Z, or so 1997-2007, video games, listening to music, 14%, 12% for browsing the net, 11% for engaging on socials, only 10% said they'd rather watch a movie or a TV show at home. 10%. So you better start thinking about how you're going to entertain in a different way. Because what you got going on now, that audience is going away, and the ones coming behind, not so much. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, quite frankly. Love hearing from each and every single one of you. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Yesterday afternoon, there are ten and a half hours of deliberation. Two and a half, three week trial. A few days off here and there. The weekends, obviously. For being arrested. Just a few short days after. After the death of George Floyd, Derek Chauvin got to hear his fate in court. State of Minnesota plaintiff versus Derek Michael Chauvin defendant. Verdict count one. We the jury in the above entitled matter as to count one, unintentional second degree murder while committing a felony, find the defendant guilty. This verdict agreed to this 20th day of April 2021 at 144 p.m. Verdict count two. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count two, third degree murder, perpetrating an eminently dangerous act, find the defendant guilty. Verdict count three. We, the jury, in the above entitled matter as to count three, second degree manslaughter, culpable negligence, creating an unreasonable risk, find the defendant guilty. Guilty. Guilty on all three. Guilty. Thought it was the the right thing based on I when I watched a good majority of this. Obviously, it's, it's my job is what I do. Uh, we watch these things. Plus, I talk to a lot of people from places like uh, the actual courthouse themselves, as well as experts across the country. And the reality was is uh, based on the evidence that was there, he was guilty. Now the question is going to be, what happens? Because for a lot of people right now, it's about the sentencing. Listen to Nancy Pelosi as she martyrs George Floyd and also lines her pocketbook and continues to say, look, it's about me. It's, it's, it's really, it's about me. You probably didn't know this, but... George Floyd's killing was about Nancy Pelosi. Right? You probably didn't know this, but anything that happens ever is about a politician. But listen what she says at the end. Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. And we'll get back to what she says at the beginning in a little bit. For being there to call out to your mom. How, how heartbreaking was that? Call out. She acts like it was a script. Out for your mom. I can't breathe. But because of you, thousands, millions of people around the world who came out for justice, your name will always be synonymous with justice. 
and now we have to make sure justice prevails in the sentencing. In the sentencing. It's the next step. It's going to be a bit before it's time for sentencing. Probably eight weeks is what we're hearing. Judge is going to take everything into account. And then the sentencing, because he's guilty on three charges. Derek Chauvin has now been convicted of all three charges against him. Murder in the second degree, maximum 40 years. Murder in the third degree, maximum 25 years. And manslaughter, maximum 10 years. Now, all three of these charges relate to the same conduct, the killing of George Floyd. So they're run what we call concurrent, meaning at the same time. So as a practical matter, the maximum sentence Derek Chauvin faces is 40 years. 40 years. That's it. A lot of people want him to go in there for life with no chance of ever getting out. Not going to happen. The maximum. Prosecute, prosecutors already said they're going to push for the maximum. It's up to the judge to decide. Derek Chauvin's essentially said, you get to decide as far as the, you know, my conduct. You can look at it. We don't have another hearing about that. There'll be witness, uh, you know, not just witness, there'll be victim impact statements, and he'll have a chance to address the court. But how many years is he going to get? And then what does he serve? How much is he likely to be sentenced? To? Minnesota that. has what we call sentencing guidelines. You have to start with the person's criminal history score. Derek Chauvin has never been convicted of a prior crime, so he's going to be in the lowest category, which is zero. Then you have to find the highest crime he was convicted of, murder in the second degree, unintentional. And so that leaves us with a recommended range of 128 to 180 months. The recommended sentence for a judge is 150 months, which is 12 and a half years. And he'd probably do nine plus. Now, he could go higher. Or Dan uh, Abrams of Court TV fame said, wouldn't be surprised if he got 15 or maybe 20. Uh, but 12 and a half is what they're looking at. That's that's the, the recommend, they have the sentence guidelining. I didn't make it up. They didn't make it up. It, it, you know, as far as like their judges throwing stuff out there, they've put this, you know, they've gone and done something and put this in a kind of, it's like a spreadsheet, if you will. Like, you know, people don't realize that it's like if you lose your finger, like the way that the insurance companies go about like what each digit's worth and they count, it's kind of like the same kind of thing. If you have a cri- prior criminal history based on certain things, felonies, violence, the whole nine yards, you're going to get a lot more. Somebody with zero criminal history. Are they going to push for a race thing? Say, look, this was on top of that. This was a situation where there was a hate crime, you know, committed and stuff. I mean, I just don't know. But do I think he's going to get 12 and a half? I think he'll get at least that. I wouldn't be surprised if he got 15 or 20. Will that be enough for some? No, it won't. Let's go back to Nancy Pelosi for a second. Let's listen to what she said because it's just the 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 cojones, the gravitas, the balls to come out and say thank you George Floyd for sacrificing your life for justice first of all like if you people who sacrifice like so you know like when people heard this like like, Jesus I even said my man you know here's an art project we could do and I came up with this art project that I won't say because maybe I want to do it and then people be like oh my god somebody took it but I'm like sacrificing he didn't jump in front of a bullet Right. This wasn't the end of Armageddon where he was all, you know, you know, Bruce Willis and like no AJ and pushes Ben Affleck into the little ship because he's going to do it himself to sacrifice. This wasn't that. All right. He didn't deserve to be killed. I don't care what anybody says out there. He didn't. But to say he sacrificed, people make it seem like he was some sort of. Of, of, you know, like this, like he threw himself on a grenade. No, I think if you would asked him, right, because people who do stuff like that, they do it again. I think if you ask him, would you go through this again or would you rather be alive and see your daughter grow up? I think he's going to choose B. She's not done. I'm sorry, Nancy. For being there to call out to your mom, how, how heartbreaking was that? It's not a movie. She makes it seem like it's a script. Continue. Call out for your mom. I can't breathe, but because of you, thousands, millions of people around the world who came out for justice 
your name will always be synonymous with justice. I don't know if this will be synonymous with justice, but his name globally is it's very real. The world watched this. We talk always about like was the thing that we can equate this to is Rodney King. Rodney King happened before viral. Rodney King happened when a guy took a like a video. And the camera he had, for those out there who may be a little bit younger, it has a small little tape inside of it, of which you would take it out and put it into a VHS player tape that had an opening for it, and then you could... That's how long ago that was. That was 91. Then it got on the news. And then it took a few days before it became a story story. And it wasn't... It was grainy film. You could see what was going on, and it was horrific. I think mean, anybody can deny that. But I was back and forth between England and here, and nobody knew who Rodney King was. They knew the guy, the 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 the, the, the kind of knew like a few people knew like the beating or they saw it on TV, but nobody knew who he was. Nobody knew his name, and when the riots happened, nobody really even knew what was going on. Uh, Because I had family and friends that were coming over from England and they were flying in on like the second day. And they're like, man, the entire L.A. is just it's just fires everywhere. George name, George Floyd's name is everywhere. 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 There are murals of him all over the globe. There were. Soccer players around the globe, basketball players around the globe, cricket players around the globe, artists and people who knew his name. That some guy from Houston, Texas, right, who had had his issues, was killed and the world saw it. And the world watched. I got so many texts or what apps yesterday from my friends in Europe going, I think that was justice. Wow, you know, I can't believe America did it. Because I think a lot of people thought yesterday, they were holding their breath thinking, up until the guilties came in, they were waiting for that not guilty in all three accounts. They're waiting for that. Because people are still going, how did the four officers again get off and... With Rodney King and the beating of Rodney King. Now they lost the not only a civil case they had to settle outside of there, but they also the the you know there was another case on the federal charges of civil rights and stuff. But I I understood, but see, I just want to we're we're so much further removed from that. And despite what people say, I hear people all the time. We're more divided than ever. No, we're not. It just seems that way. Let's go back again. I don't know, hundred plus years. And remember that we once took up arms against each other, neighbor and neighbor, family member and family member. That's pretty divided. Now the next question is, what's the next thing? What's the next step? How do we go from here to continue to move conversations and find progress? And that simple thing for me is let's keep politicians out of it and we'll go from there. I think it's the best start. 323-538-2423 323-538-2423 at Chid Benson Show is your Twitter tweet at us text said program uh, we do a little what's trending next because you know while this was a huge case there are other things trending and I'm always curious to find out what's going on in the Google world comparatively to what happens in Twitter because Twitter's about anger and chaos and once in a while humor we'll talk about what's trending straight ahead Chad Benson Show Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say woo! Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? I always like finding out what's trending because I think the world 
Like you go on Twitter and you just talk radio, you watch the news, they all it is one of those things where you think that's the only thing that's going on. So everybody in the world knows be that's that's all they're watching. I'm here to tell you. Not even close. Not even close. It's a perfect example of what people are looking at. And the one thing you can look at when it comes to these is they're they're measurable in ways that other things aren't. You know, like Nielsen's rating for television. It's like, oh, you're, you're a Nielsen family, so you're, what, 800,000 people? It's kind of wacky. But for some things, especially on the web, which should be easier, you can actually look at these things and go, this is measurable. So let's start on Twitter. Body cam footage after a teenage girl was fatally shot by Columbus police officer. So, uh, Makia Bryant, you're going to see that a lot. Uh, whether or not the news is going to show you her trying to stab somebody. <laughs> Don't know if they'll do that, but welcome to that. Juventus, European soccer power, says the European Super League cannot go ahead without six Premier League clubs. And we're going to talk about this because the biggest story in the world hasn't been Derek Chauvin. It hasn't been the coronavirus. It's actually been this because the other six and a half plus billion people, this is their sport and their jam and what some teams tried to do, which was... What? NBC reacts to Black Lives Matter email controversy. And if you guys want to talk also about this, the controversy goes on with that and Black Lives Matter. Because for those of you not keeping score, Black Lives Matter is getting a lot of pushback from a lot of people. A lot of people. What kind of organization they are. I've always said from the beginning, I understand the spirit of it from the average person that's there. But like a lot of things, the average person who says they're a Democrat or Republican that's in spirit. That's not what the Republicans, Democrats represent. And if most people figured out what they were looking to do and try to do, most people say, I don't know if I want to be a part of that. Mark Johnson, Idaho news anchor. He's the unlikely Internet obsession after KTVB tweeted out an article about him with no context or anything else other than his name. <laughs> that's it. Now there's tons of memes about him being Mark Johnson and Johnson, and things of that nature. But you go over here to, to Google and you start looking at the trends. What's the biggest trending thing? So yesterday you would think, what? It's got to be Derek Chauvin. No. Apple. Their event. Mm-hmm. Number one and two. Maxine Waters, three. Derek Chauvin, trial. Live stream, four. Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent was like number five because he dismissed COVID and now he says he's really sick and everybody's like, ha ha, that's what you get. Rodney King also trending and plenty of soccer stuff about the breakaway league. But it, like we think, oh, this, no, it's Apple. People want to know how much, what's the new iPhone do? What's it do? You got a new Mac? What's a new backbone? What's a new do? How much that cost? You got the Air Thin Super Touch MacBook Pro for four thousand eighty-five dollars. Great for any student everywhere, and it 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 it's it's a feather. It's the feather light. <laughs> I don't know. This is something I made up. Oh man! So yeah, that was uh, big yesterday. So the of the new Apple stuff and the Mac rumors. So people are excited about. We have our priorities, people. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Last week, regulators paused the use of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine 
pending an investigation of the six reported cases of possible side effects out of the nearly 7 million doses given. According to a new poll, most Americans say pausing the vaccine was the right call, and one in five people say they're still unlikely to get a COVID shot. That's a similar percentage to polls from back in January. And you're not going to convince most of them. You're not. Convenience may help them out down the line. Uh, less in front of you. You're going to have to make it seem like it's their idea, right? So you're going to have 20% of this country when it comes to the coronavirus and the vaccine. They're not going to get it. And I don't care if you get it. You, you guys, let me tell you what I'll never, I'll never tell you how to vote, right? I'll never tell you who to love, who to worship. I'll never tell you get a vaccine or don't get a vaccine. That's, that's a you choice. That's the beauty of our country. We get choice. We can do some things, right? We get choice. So it's your choice. Right now, those people aren't getting it, period. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Down the road, out of convenience, one or two people, hey, I'm here for the flu shot or a shingle shot. Hey, they get themselves something, right? There you go. How about that? Woo! But if you want to get those people to do anything, And this is 20% of people who said they will never do something ever. And we're not talking about something like, hey, would you ever jump into a volcano from, you know, skydiving? No, we're talking about real things. What do you do? You make it seem like it's their idea. You're not making me do it. This is my choice. You're You're not forcing me to get it. I'm choosing to do it. I'm in control. And that's going to take a while. It is. And as far as the blood clots, it's very, very small. One in a million, essentially. One in a million. But when you think about the statistics, right, of how many shots have been given and then how many people have had issues with this and whether or not this is, you know, the European Union came out yesterday. It's a perfect example of how we handle things like this. European Union came out yesterday and said, look, is there a very small chance that you could get a blood clot because of this? It seems to be that way. But, and that's where we stop. Oh, there it is. Run, print, go out, talk about it, fear. European Union afterwards said, but benefits outweigh the risk. Oh, okay. Okay. But when you take away the statistics and you turn it into the humanizing of something, then it brings it home to people. And for many of our, you know, people who listen to the radio, watch television 24-7, especially the news cycle, read all these things, consume all this information, so much of it, especially when it comes to us, is all about negativity and the fear porn that they put out there. It's not about education and giving you the data and the facts. It's none of those things. It's more about fear because it's an emotion that's way easier to get people to act on that than happiness. According to a family spokesperson, Emma Berkey from Nevada is one of the six women experiencing those rare blood clots. And the family is very concerned. Um, you know, I, I, it's just one of those situations, you know, where you're, are we going to, are we going to be able to keep her? Are we going to lose her? A spokesperson for the family says Berkey suffered multiple seizures a few days after getting her shot, was hospitalized and placed in a medically induced coma. Now she is slowly recovering. Slowly recovering. She got the shot. Something happened. Can you 100% definitively say and trace it back to that? Uh, Because some of the stuff they're looking at, they're saying, well, hold on a second. Some of these people were on certain things. That also seems to be the, 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 there, there is some sort of commonality in some of this stuff. But it's the fear side of it. And it's what the news shows you and what it doesn't. Bill Maher brought it up. 90% of the coverage in America. And we've talked about the coverage in America. We talk about the people, you know, you watch CNN and they have, you know, in, in, in remembrance. They don't have that for heart disease or diabetes, which still were the number one killers last year. <laughs> still, even with COVID, number one killers are heart disease and diabetes. Overweight, unhealthy. Well, they still, they don't, they don't put that up there. Like, oh, there's a picture of Jim. He ate himself to death. 
poor lifestyle. It's just underneath it, in memoriam, poor lifestyle. <laughs> Smoke, drank, over eight. Well, that's not very nice, Chad. I'm, but you know, because it's fear. Talk about the fact that Democrats and Republicans look at these things in such different ways. Well, that's kind of like life anyways. And the Republicans, in some places, they've over, you know, they've overplayed how their hand in this thing is not a big deal. Well, it's not if you're fairly healthy and young. It's really not. We were having a chat about this yesterday. One of the side effects now is supposedly is shingles. And uh, so my other show I do, my on-air partner is the world's biggest hypochondriac. He is a... He, he thinks we should double, triple mask, make sure that everybody in the world gets the vaccine, get it twice, get it three times, get it every day. I mean, he's that kind of guy. But he had the shingles a couple months ago. And let me tell you something. It was a treat. <laughs> he turns to me in one of our breaks, says to me, he's reading up on it. Do you know that I could have a stroke or a heart attack and die from this? I'm like, oh, my God, dude, settle down. But he says to me yesterday, if I'm 22, I'm not getting that. And, and one of the side effects could be shingles. <laughs> I ain't getting this. I I would tell kids don't get it. You got to base everything in reality. We don't do that because reality doesn't sell. Even and I'm here to tell everybody if you guys don't know this, reality TV it's not real. It's not. No, it's not. It's not real. It's not. Today people are talking about Ted Nugent because he's sick. He got COVID. He downplayed it this entire time. People are like, "Ha, you got your comeuppance." Rocker Ted Nugent says he has COVID. The rocker said he had flu-like symptoms for 10 days. I have never been so sick in all my life. I can't even believe I'm here doing this, but the adrenaline obviously has a life and a power of its own. But I could barely crawl out of bed. Despite his diagnosis, Nugent continues to downplay the virus. He previously called the pandemic a, quote, scam and says there's no reason to get tested, wear a mask or distance from others. Dirty, bastard, lying, scam, smoke and mirrors, COVID-19 freaks. One side goes to one direction. The other side goes the other direction. By the way, he's 72 uh, and uh, he survived. Is it as bad as they told you? No. It isn't. Is it flu-like and nothing to worry about? No, that isn't either. But we can't have a conversation. We can't have real talk about data and facts because people have agendas, and agendas change everything, whether it's this or Derek Chauvin and the George Floyd conviction. doesn't matter. People want to come out, and they're going to say, this isn't enough. This is this. They're going to talk about the sacrifices that George Floyd made Nancy Pelosi with your insane soundbite. Thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life for justice. He didn't sacrifice his life. He was killed. He didn't choose to go, hey, guys, I'm going to defend all of you so you guys can run away. And I'll no, he did. No. Wasn't that. But you came out and, and, and that whole thought process of, of saying something like that, because what's that really about? It's about you. It's about you. Both sides do it. And now I'm going to just get really selfish. Uh, I'm glad that he was found guilty on all charges. Yeah. Even if he might not be guilty of all charges. Oh, my God. I am glad that he is guilty of all charges because I want a verdict that keeps this country from going up oh. in flames. Uh, uh, uh-uh. Oh, my God. No. What do you mean? Look, Greg, listen. What do you mean? No, I'm at least being honest. I, my my, ta- my neighborhood was looted. Greg, I don't ever want to go through that again. We do not sacrifice individuals for the sake I'm of I'm saying he's guilty. I'm saying I'm glad about the verdict. Yeah. You have to explain it to Judge Piro there because she's ready to explode. What he's saying is he thought he was guilty. He's glad they came back with a guilty verdict. Because he didn't want his neighborhood to burn down. People freak out. Once again, that's always about sides. He was honest, at least. He was. 
I just love their, oh, Craig, oh, Craig, Craig Gutfeld, Craig, 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 Craig. And yes, did I think he was guilty? I didn't think he was guilty. Do I think he's going to spend the rest of his life in jail? I do not. But I did think he was guilty. And now the question is from here, over the next several eight weeks, as the judge really looks into everything through the victim statements and everything, how much time does he actually get? Only the judge is going to know that, and he is going to look at every single thing across the board. And we're not done here, by the way, with Minnesota and the police, because there's going to be an investigation from the highest cop. I am announcing that the Justice Department has opened a civil investigation to determine whether the Minneapolis Police Department engages in a pattern or practice of unconstitutional or unlawful policing. And they're going to look into that. So remember with the Rodney King, and this is the thing that's probably most comparable. They were found not guilty. There was a civil lawsuit. L.A. paid $4 million in damages almost. And then there was a look into was Rodney King's civil rights violated. And that was a federal civil rights trial. On that. And guess what? They did not walk away scot free. They didn't. It was more on the incidents. Remember, what took place with Rodney King was a much different kind of trial. Rodney wasn't on trial, George Floyd wasn't on trial, their lives weren't on trial. What was on trial with those federal office with the officers in the federal side of it was what took place and the assault on Rodney King and was his civil rights violated as opposed to when the actual case came up, it was more about the methods. than the officers themselves. And that's, again, there was a lot of issues there. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. Tweet and text. By the way, the four officers got anywhere between 70 and 87 months. That's federal time. You do real time there. You do real time there. So this may not be over even for Derek Chauvin and the Minnesota Police Department. And remember, there are three other officers out there still waiting to have their trials. And seeing this yesterday, are they going to say, we're done? Let's pack it in and, and come to a plea? They might. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Let's talk about my pillow, my slippers. So I got my my slippers. I got some here. In fact, people at work. One lady, you know, because we know. Look, I, I'm not going to hide it. I love the product. Guy at the top. One lady here is like, I don't. I showed her the slippers. She's like, Can I have these? That's how amazing they are. Inside the faux fur, the faux fur. Uh, like a chauffeur, but it's a faux fur. It's awesome. You've got the moccasin style. You've got the slip-on style. you got three levels, right? So you got three levels of comfort. First one is the My Patented Fill, right? So in your in your slipper, you got the My Patented Fill. Then there's the, the memory foam, and then there's this gel made from soybeans right here in the USA. 68 money-back guarantee, one-year limited warranty, different colors, different styles. I'm telling you guys, you can wear indoors, outdoors, wear them all day, comfort level, through the roof. You will love, 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 love these things. 40% off. Go to MyPillow.com, promo code Benson, use them. Check out all of the amazing products they have. And that mattress topper is otherworldly. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson, MyPillow.com, promo code Benson, Chad Benson Show.
no need to socially distance while listening to your Chad Benson Show podcast. Four out of five experts say so. I'm a scientist! There is no corona! But hurry, before they change their mind, you know they will. Chad's podcast found on iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, and wherever you find your favorite COVID-free podcasts. Oh my gosh. I kind of like it, I'm not going to lie. This is the Chad Benson Show. I wear my mask. I've had it for a while. I think this mask I've had for about a year. Probably about a year. I think we got them in May, actually. It was just after the draft because I've got an Arizona Cardinals mask. Now, I've got some K95s and I have a few other ones. I had some really cool ones with ninjas on it. See, when you're buying stuff with ninjas on it, you're like thinking it's probably going to protect you because they're ninjas. We found out they have no medical use whatsoever. <laughs> but what they did do is make other people around you feel like, hey, we could do this. <laughs> oh, Chad, you're just being sarcastic now. It's not very nice. It's just not. I think it's just this is not a good thing, Chad. It's not very nice. It's just being honest, throwing it out there, being honest. Netflix, speaking of being honest, you know what I watched on Netflix the other day? There was a, it was a Drew Barrymore movie. And I flipped it on. I thought, oh, you know what? This, maybe this is kind of funny. It was the worst depressing movie. It was called The Stand-In or something, where she plays two parts. It was awful. I couldn't even get through it. I'm like, this sucks. This And they're spending a ton of money because they still think there's the opportunity here to really take such a hold on the entertainment world that it is going to, like, this is going to be it. And they're the leaders in the clubhouse. Let's not pretend that, you know, Hulu's not there. Disney's doing well, but it ain't it ain't Netflix. But they're struggling. Netflix, missing the mark on new subscribers. The streaming service had expected to hit 6 million new customers in the first quarter of the year. The actual number, 4 million. One of the reasons for the miss, they blamed the COVID-19 production shutdown, saying it led to fewer shows in the first half of the year. The content is coming back. Netflix saying it'll spend more than $17 billion this year on new shows and movies, compared to $12 billion last year. And some of their stuff they've done, like I watched uh, Old Guard last year with Charlize Theron. Awesome. Amazing. Extraction with Hemsworth, one of the best action movies. Ryan Reynolds had a, a movie out, too, uh, that was like a spy, kind of cool thriller. It was awesome. They're doing it well. The documentaries are great, but people are going back to work as well. And you've got to give people content almost daily. That's why YouTube does what it does. Because people can go there and on a daily basis get content that's fresh. And we like fresh stuff now. It's all about being fresh, certified or otherwise. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. When the time comes when some cop that did something wrong and in that locker room, somebody pulls him aside and say, hey, we don't do that here. We don't do that. That's when you get changed. That's culture change. And that's what has to happen. It can happen. Not overnight, but it can happen. And it starts with holding people accountable that, that operate outside of the bounds of justice. Former police officer Charles Ramsey talking about change. Here's the other thing is, and I think this is like anything else, right? So Derek Chauvin has been found guilty. All three counts. I think a lot of people wanted there to be a trial to see the evidence play itself out. I think you still have some people that no matter what, the police will always be right. And you still have some people out there who say no matter what, the police will always be wrong. This was one of those things where they had the opportunity to present the evidence, and they did. He got to go in front of a, period of his, uh, a jury of his peers. He, he got the full 
Monty, if you will, which is what's supposed to happen. It's not a perfect system, but it's a system that more often than not gets it right. In saying that, like anything, we want change. Okay. What does change look like? For everybody, it's going to be something different. For some, it, they're like, I don't really have a problem with the police, so I'm not worried about that. I've got friends who, I'm going to say this, they're, well, they're Americans, but they're black. I know, right? Like, oh, but Chad, you didn't, you didn't phrase it right. Yeah. And they'll say, look, you know, you, you do something stupid, and you do something stupid to compound that stupidity, things can happen. It doesn't mean that, you know, we're not downplaying any of this. But he says, yeah, do they get pulled over? Has he gotten pulled over more than me? Well, I get pulled over quite a lot. I'm not going to. And I don't even speed. That's the weird thing. Uh, but yeah, but he and I have chatted about this and I said, uh, what does change look like to you? He goes, I just want my kids to have an opportunities. That's what I want. I want kids to have opportunities. And he goes, and I, and I want, it's funny. He goes, I want both sides to not see color. He goes, you know, the right, he goes, they absolutely can. He goes, and the left, 100% does. That's it. Yeah. Change is different for everybody. Are we talking about change with the police? We're we talking about change in general. And we're asking the police to go, hey, we, you guys need to change the way that you guys are doing your policing. I think it's fair. We need to modernize it. We absolutely do. We need to take a step back and say, are we asking our police officers to not only be perfect, but to do too much? You shouldn't have to be a marriage counselor, drug therapist, right? We can go on and on, fix the homeless problem. You shouldn't have to. It's not That wasn't your description. But we need to ask, can we all do better? Just curious. Can't we all put ourselves in positions where maybe we all need to do better? And that's a tough thing. It's a tough thing. You know, one of the first things trending yesterday was abolish the police. Okay, let's just say we abolish the police. So what does that look like? I'm just curious. What exactly does that look like? in pick anywhere USA. There's an assault happening. Who are you calling? Is this going to be like Demolition Man, where somebody shows up with cue cards and reads them off when somebody's... If you guys have never seen that movie, is that is that what this is going to be? We talked to officers on numerous occasions about, you know, hey, it would be awesome... If we had help out there, but to think about like, let's say, you know, some of these places want to get rid of cops for various reasons, especially things like traffic stops. So why am I going to let, you know, why is somebody going to go, okay, you're going to pull me over? No, I don't think so. You have no power to do anything. And if you're really doing something and you're really a badass, do you think you're going to do anything to me? No. But what if somebody has a real determination to hurt somebody? And it's a person who's not right mentally, maybe on drugs, has attacked the neighbors and the family. You're going to send a counselor? Like, that's the first thing, you know? Well, no, Chad, it's a little, it's a little. Okay, so you're going to send somebody unarmed to somebody who's got arms, potentially. Whether it's a knife, a hammer, a, a gun, whatever it is. Well, no, that's just, that would be stupid, right? Because that person would get killed and nobody's going to want to be. There needs to be change across the board. We can all do better. I think we look at one side as this evil side. And the other side looks at it like, oh, the cops are there. No, cops are people. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to have some bad. 
bad, bad people inside. And some of them don't start out that way. But along the way, they become jaded. And they become. So is the, it, 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 should the question be, what does change look like to you? Like everything else, what's we don't seem to have an end game. There's no goal. The goal is we need change. Okay, tell me. Tell me. It would be like saying, man, I'm praying for more money, and you look down and you find a penny. Well, there, your prayer was answered. Well, you know what I mean. No, you said you wanted more money. You didn't have that penny a minute ago. So in theory, you have more money. And in actual, but you know what I mean. No, I don't. What, what do you need? What's change look like? Those are questions we need to be asking. What is the end goal as far as this change? Because it's not going to be perfect. Some people are going to always want more, and it'll never be enough. And some people won't want to give in on anything because they think they're right and everything. But the reality is, is until we can decide, okay, what does this real change look like? And have conversations amongst people who are going to be participating in it, not profiting from it. That's going to be tough. It is. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. I do. Again, the good, the bad. Conversations. I like conversations. Conversations need to happen more and more on all kinds of things. Perfect example is immigration. Now here's a here's a perfect example of something that we need to be talking about in a real way. Of what does immigration reform look like? How do we enforce it? And can we just and the people and the powers to be? Are you going to actually be a part of the solution where you're going to be like, okay, we're going to do this and we're sticking to this plan, or is this? Something we just can't do. As the federal government scrambles to find places to house and care for unaccompanied minors, the border region is suddenly flush with something it badly needed, jobs. We did receive several calls from federal contractors looking to hire for thousands of positions. Bianca Cervantes works to connect hiring managers with workers. The more children who come across the border, the greater the need for people to care for them. Yeah. Jobs. People coming across the border. Legally, illegally. We always say, since I was a child, we need to fix immigration. We need to fix immigration. You know what we do? Like everything, we do a little bit here, a little bit there. We don't enforce a little bit of it. We do try to enforce some of it. We Nobody has an actual thousand-yard view of, okay, let's think macro and micro. Micro is momentarily, macro is large. What does it look like? What does change look like? How does that work? What's the goal? What's the end game here? The end game is to stop people coming here illegally, but maybe it should also be to allow people to get here in a much easier way, whether it be part-time, and meaning they're coming here literally for seasonal work or on a more permanent basis. But at the same time, we enforce the laws. We catch you coming here, no matter where you're from, whether you've flown here, from some place in Europe, Africa, Australia, the Antarctic, South America, and you overstay your visa or you come across the border illegally, that we enforce the laws and we don't tell you, all right, we'll get back to you in two plus years. What does it look like? You, we're not going to get any of these problems actually fixed and, and, and moving in a direction that we think is right and you're not going to fix it with everybody remember there are always going to be people out there who are going to be like nope it's not enough or it's too much but for the vast majority the 70 80 percent the exhausted majority that's us we need to figure out what it really looks like have the voices that want to make these things happen come up with a concrete plan and move in that direction and as we write that plan remember we write it in pencil not pen Because some things will change because of human nature. But we have a real end game as opposed to whatever this is. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show. Your Twitter, your Instagram. Do we have anything else? I don't think I'm on Pinterest. I'm not on Parler. I did Parler for one day. I wrote hello and somebody's like, F you. I'm like, that's solid. Then the my pillow guy is Frank. That's his new one that started and stopped. And I think Trump's supposed to have a new one. You can check out Facebook as well. That's always fun. 
Chad Benson Show, simple and easy. They are rough greens. Last night, all three of my dogs. This is what it used to be like. I'd come home, and I got two puppies. Well, they're about a, one's a year and a half old, and the other one's just over. Yeah, one's almost two, and the other one's a year and a half. And I would open the door, and they would run. they jump, and they do the puppy thing. And they're, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I can't believe you. How long are you got? Five years, 10 years, 25 years, 100 years? I don't even know. They're, but my dog, Doodle, would just sit there. Couldn't do anything. It's so about a year and a half ago. Just like late December, early last January, this past one, but the one, I started giving him rough greens. K95 is smart. They said, try it, see if you like it. So we sprinkle it on their food. A year and a half later, he's the first one to greet me at the door. He's bouncy, he's happy. Sometimes he runs by me because he sees his rabbits outside and he wants to chase them, and that's great. It is amazing to see the transformation. His arthritic hips, his fatty tumors, all of those things, just the scene miraculously gone. Probiotics, vegetables, minerals, omega-3, 6, 9, all these amazing things in this. And it's just a supplement. You sprinkle on your dog's food. Right now, Rough Greens wants you to try K9 Smart for free. They're going to ship you a bag. You pay for shipping. That's it. They're going to give you the bag for free. Go to roughgreens.com slash chad, ruffgreens.com slash chad, or call 833-MY-DOG-77, 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. Helen Keller is a Nazi terrorist that is a male. Is that what you're telling me right now? Yeah. Are you thinking of Hitler? Who's Hitler? Vaccines work, but only the Chad Benson Show is 100% effective against stupidity. Do you know what D-Day is? D-Day. A person? A rapper? God, Karen, you are so stupid. Check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and wherever you find your favorite woke-free podcasts. No, 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 no. This is the Chad Benson Show. That is just sad. Are you thinking of Hitler? <laughs> Let's just you know, listen to that, right? So there's a kid in school, not like a three-year-old, high school, who thinks Helen Keller was a man who was fake. <laughs> Didn't go to... Yeah, just didn't exist, right? Didn't exist. Just all it's made up. Amalgamation of many different things. Just not a real person. Just none of it's real. It's like none of it. You thinking of Hitler? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> I could just, I would look over and I'm like, wow. Please, I just say, don't ever vote. Don't vote. Just don't do it. Just don't. Please. <laughs> don't reproduce. Just. Chad's not very nice, Chad. Really? If you're, say, I don't know, 16, and I feel that's a little old, and you have no idea who Adolf Hitler was, which, by the way, I think yesterday was his birthday. It's 420. A lot happening yesterday. If you don't know who he is, wow. What are we teaching kids? Woke stuff. Super woke. It's getting woke. Get wokeity, wokeity, woke. That is, do you know D-Day? Is that a, is that a rapper? Is that what's that? Is that a, now, if you had said, hey, Chad, who's D-Day? And I said, who or what? Are you talking about Normandy, right? Are we talking about that? Are we talking about that day? Or are we talking about D-Day from Animal House? <laughs> That's a who. The what is something different. But you should know who Helen Keller is. You know, what a quiz show is going to be like in the future. <laughs> it's going to be idiocracy. What was that? What was that? Oh my balls! Is that what it was, producer Phil? It was ow my balls. Ow my balls. That's right. Yeah, that's that's was his. Where the whole thing was the premise was some guy would just run up and kick you in the grundle. That's all. The, that was the premise of the show. 
Oh, my Lord. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. It's over. Now we move on to the sentencing side when it comes to Derek Chauvin, which is going to be eight weeks out. Majority of people who are... They have J- JDs and Juris Doctorates, become lawyers. Some of them have gone on to become judges, things of that nature, legal experts. Say 12 and a half years is kind of when you look at the grid and how the, the, the sentencing guidelines based on certain things are, is what Derek Chauvin will get. And we know that that's going to send people into an uproar. They're going to have a chance, the prosecution, to say, look, he deserves more than what would be considered the minimum based on the fact that he has zero criminal past and stuff. So that's the next opportunity. And for Derek Chauvin to have somewhat of a say in court, because a lot of the victim statements, and, and as well as his, if he speaks at all. So this will be interesting. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. That nine-year-old girl was not just an emotional witness, but she could become a very important witness with regard to the potential sentence. Yeah. The eyewitnesses that were there may have a chance to have their say. Some will, some won't. In particular, a young girl who was there who witnessed it. When it comes to the, what, anyone, anyone, the impact statements. Will Chauvin give a statement? You know, for this this entire time that, that, that this has gone on, there really hasn't been any, like, what happened? Why did you, why did, why did you, what did you say, you know, what were you thinking at that moment? What was it, was there, what was the reaction when he started to fight with you that caused you to get to the point where this took place? Why was it a situation where you were on top and for not, like, what, we don't know. We know the, the end of what took place. Right? We we understand that. We see that. But the why, I think, is a very fair question. I think a lot of people would like to to figure out. And at this moment, I mean, he's not said virtually really anything. As quiet as can be. So we'll see what takes place in in the coming weeks. And is he going to speak? Is he going to have any statement on his behalf? So when the judge looks at him and says, "Look, I, you know, I, I, what you did was horrible. It was awful. It was vile and disgusting. And you deserve to go to jail for for a long time." But I also understood that you you did work in the community and city, and you did do X, Y, and Z, and you have no criminal past. And based on that, I I can't. You know, I I don't know what, what's going to happen, but still just, you know, for some people, it's only about race. It is only about race. That's it. It's, it's, it's a cop, right? Might as well be wearing a Klan outfit with a gun. That's all it is. But I think getting the reality of it, and for some people, that is their reality. That's the way they see it. They've been taught. They've seen it in their communities. All of that stuff. And, and and they believe that that's, that's what it is. And, and that's tough when you've been brought up to think that all cops are bad. All cops are pigs. All cops are X, Y, and Z. When, when you've been brought up that way, that's a tough thing. 
You know, I was thinking about like, you know, everybody wants police reform. Police reform. We need we need police reform. Even today, Merrick Garland's come out and said, hey, you know what? We're going to uh, we're going to investigate. We're going to look into all of this stuff. Congress gave the department the authority to conduct civil practice pattern or practice investigations, which look beyond individual incidents to assess systemic failures. Those investigations allow the department to determine whether a police department has a pattern or practice of unconstitutional or unlawful policing. And they're going to look into to that. Did they do something within the police department that set upon officers where they built a culture that was using excess force, doing all of this? Is that there, or was this a one-off? I think the biggest one I can remember was Rampart. I don't know if you guys remember that. Uh, Rampart, L.A., they had a crash unit. Community Resource Against Street Hoodlums. Crash, because, you know, everything's got to be an acronym. What ended up happening there was they ended up settling 140 civil lawsuits for $125 million. It was awful. Like you could not believe how bad they were. They had ties with the Bloods, ties to the murder of Notorious B.I.G. They had ties to death row records, framing people. It was an absolute do I think that's Minneapolis? I don't think so. I don't think there's a culture like that in there. That was that that got to the point where when you go and watch like training day with Denzel and Ethan Hawke. It's a great movie and he won Academy Award Denzel because he's just ridiculous an actor. Just in just but that's what that was like. I don't think Minneapolis was like this. I don't. I don't think Minneapolis was like this. Do I think there could be issues? I absolutely think you look into all of these things. You want to show, hey, we turned over every single thing we could. We turned over every piece of of of, of evidence that we could find uh, to the best investigators. And we've looked. And will they find some stuff? Yeah, of course. I think you'll find some. But a lot of this is like when they investigate college football departments and NCAA basketball teams and stuff. Is there a culture where you've lost complete control or you fostered a culture of, of awful things, including violence? The investigation I am announcing today will assess whether the Minneapolis Police Department engages in a pattern or practice of using excessive force, including during protests. And by the way, let, let, let's 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 the protest thing is very interesting. Like the, you're going to get into the, the, the protest side of thing. Because I know that they said there's 34 states where Republicans are trying to restrict protest or crack down. Protesting, like, like everything, it's not an issue. Protesting is not the issue. Rioting and violence is the issue. Let's go over this again. You show up. You've got your sign. You want your voice heard. Not an issue. Right? You do that, it's great. Fantastic. Fan, that's that's the beauty of our country. It's getting out there, having your voice heard. Doing it as, as a group. Now, eventually they may say, hey, look, you know what? We're going to ask people to break it up. Uh, you know, you know, there's a curfew, whatever it is. That's, none of that is wrong. Here's wrong. George Floyd's been killed, and I'm so mad that I'm going to light part of the city on fire and steal some shoes because I think that's what George would want. No, that is not protesting. That is childish. That is vile. That is absolutely awful destruction of city and people's livelihoods and lives being lost. That is not protesting. That is not. So let's separate the two there, which we know is very tough to do.
We do. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from every single one of you. Coronavirus still out there. It's weird that the coronavirus in the last, you know, it takes a lot for this thing to get kicked to 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 the back pages of anything. But uh, we're seeing some numbers rise. But we're at the point now where it's it's how many people are going to get vaccinated. And I just I, we're not vaccinating ourselves out of this. And, you know, when we talk about how many people, there's 20 percent of adults. OK, that are never going to get vaccinated. There's not now. Not any time in the near future. Down the road, they may. If it's convenient, when it feels like it's their idea. But this goes back to, like a lot of things, when we have a conversation on the show. What's the end game? Dr. Fauci. What? Let's talk to Fauci here. Wear the mask. Don't go outside. I think I've never, and in, in you shouldn't. Dr. Fauci, I'm going to ask you, when, in your mind, will it be safe to resume normal life. That's a hard thing to ask, uh, answer a question like that when I I, I just, you, you know, it depends. Okay, I get it depends. Like tomorrow we could have a, a new a new variant on this and if people don't get vaccinated with the variants and the things that don't go. Okay. But we'd still like to kind of know. Like you don't get on an airplane and they say, hey, we're flying to Germany. How long is the flight? I don't know. <laughs> that, no, no. It's like, no, how long? They usually tell you it's going to be eight hours and 12 minutes. It's going to be 12 hours and 15 minutes. We could catch up. We could have a little bit of, 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 of a tailwind uh, that could, you know, push us out there a little faster or vice versa. They don't say, uh, you know, with the clouds and, and stuff, and there could be another cloud and some wind coming. Maybe we don't have it. Maybe there's just we just fly forever. It's a fair question to ask. And especially if we're going to be beholden to people that decide, I'm not going to get a vaccine no matter what. And because of that, this is our new normal. No. No. Don't think so. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Sleep mightily important. And normally, you guys know, I, uh, I don't sleep a lot. But now there's studies out, people looking around saying, well, sleep is really, really good for you. Apparently six hours of sleep is the optimal number of hours you need to get for sleep. And it was really interesting to read this. And one of the things is, because I just don't. I have a little one. I've got all kinds of stuff going on. I work a lot. As I'm reading these studies, it's like they think this is going to help you fight off dementia and stuff, and I think part of that's because you, you, your brain's beat, and you know they're looking at all of these different things. Is when I was a kid, it was always eight hours, right? And then as you get older, you may need a little bit more, need a little bit less. Kids obviously needed a certain amount of sleep, but man, I wouldn't even know what to do with six hours of sleep. I wouldn't. Bed at ten last night, up at two this morning, here to work about three fifteen. It's kind of my my daily routine. I try to get, because I golf so much now, I try to get as some sleep on the weekends because normally I would get my nap in here or there, but I'm like really just been pushing it because I've got some tournaments coming up. So I'm, but man, I wouldn't even know what to do with six hours of sleep. I thought, oh, that sounds like a dream. Like for a week or is that a night? 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Check us out across all the social media world. There's plenty of it out there. And I do some stuff, not as much as I like to, but at the same time, I'm also at the point where I feel so frustrated at times with social media. I just take a deep breath because watching people argue over anything, it does get exhausting. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show. It's your Twitter. It's the Chad Benson Show. Welcome to Chad. Chad. No, not the country. The institution. The Chad Benson Show. Ah, you over the hump. Talked a lot about a lot of things. Now joining us now, 
somebody from uh, one of my sponsors, CarShield. And it's very interesting, you know, with all the craziness going on in, in, in the world, people are looking and they're deciding, what do I do? You know, should I, should I get a new car? Should I not get a new car? There isn't availability. People are keeping their cars longer because they're lasting longer. But a lot of times people run out of warranty. And, Mike, thanks for joining us today. I, I really appreciate that. And, and cars are lasting longer, but people, uh, you know, they, they, yeah, they worry about the what-if scenario. So how long have you guys, Car Shield, been around helping people? Really about, uh, I think going on 16 uh, years, it's kind of, you know, went by. I've been here since uh, the beginning. And by the way, uh, a lot of interesting stuff you were talking about there earlier in your Fauci voice, I guess, is uh, near spot on. But uh, thanks for having me on uh, as well. I appreciate that. So you guys have been around 16 years and you saw a need. Cars are lasting longer. People are keeping their stuff longer, which is understandable. Uh, but there, you know, things happen. You're going to get the inevitability. I your lights come on in your car, your check engine light, people freak out. So what do they do? You know, cars are like, how does this work? Typically, in, you know, almost any of their favorite dealer or mechanic that they have in, in their hometown or wherever they work, our, our uh, coverage is statewide, or nationwide, actually. And so if they have a claim and they go and take it to their dealer or mechanic, uh, if the coverage in their contract is one of the covered components or items, it's just that simple. The administrator, American Auto Shield, who uh, Car Shield uh, markets on behalf of, they uh, assess the claim, pay the claim directly to the mechanic or the dealer, and it's, uh, it's just that simple. It's not a reimbursement policy or anything like that. It's all handled uh, through the administrator. Now, you and I chatted. We talked about like warranty. Like warrant, people say, "Well, that's a warranty," but it's very like there's a legal ease when it comes to warranty. It has to do with the fact that the difference between a warranty is the manufacturer is the only one that's allowed to call things warranties. Yeah, and, and that's that's actually an interesting insight. Basically, how that comes down is everybody when they get their new cars, a lot of times there's a manufacturer's warranty, but those things run out, usually at about three years or 36,000 miles, sometimes a little bit longer than that. But the major coverage from the manufacturer typically kind of pitters out. And that's where CarShield comes in, is after you get beyond that manufacturer's warranty, the vehicle service contract is then kind of serves that role and protects you from, you know, $1,500 bills, $2,800 transmission repairs. You're able to then kind of budget out anything that might be an unforeseen event with a breakdown, if that makes sense. Talking to Mike Carter from Car Shields, we talk about the fact that cars are lasting longer and people are keeping their cars longer because, you know, even now it's like you go buy a new car. Oh, that sounds great. And then you find out it's like it's like seven years. That's a long time for payment uh, with Car Shield. And I look at this. With the, the thing now, as cars last longer, what what goes wrong is like the number one thing that people are like, this is what I think I need. Well, I think the the biggest thing really is peace of mind, just knowing that there's different levels of coverage and, you know, from powertrain to uh, things that are a little more expansive, things that get closer, you know, to what it is that you had when you first bought the car. And I think that uh, peace of mind is kind of the main uh, the main takeaway. I do think that, you know, with the newer uh, vehicles, you know, it used to be probably you and me or uh, me anyway, when I was 17, I could open the hood and uh, break in and change out an alternator or a water pump. And so I think that kind of the vague response is that anything that you have done with a vehicle these days in 2021, even in 2011, but now 2021, is connected to some type of uh, digitization, if you will. Right now, I don't know if you've been following uh, GM and Ford and Chrysler. They're all almost at a standstill at their manufacturing plants because they can't get these chips in from China. It shuts down like the entire functioning of the vehicle. So I think that's the number one thing is you just can't do anything yourself on a vehicle anymore. And everything kind of revolves around these electronic interfaces, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's, and you guys cover that stuff as well, which is awesome. And I, and I tell people like, if you like, I had to have some work done and you guys were, were spot on, but they had to take apart my dashboard to get to some sensors. I thought this is like the, 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 the mechanic with the greasy hands now is, is a scientist. Mike Carter, appreciate you coming on today for Car Shield. Go to carshield.com. Use my code Benson always. I thank you so very much, man. And you have a great day. You too, Chad. Great program. Thank you. Thank you. At Chad Benson Show, Twitter, C H A D B E N S O N. Be nice to each other. It's not that hard. We make it hard because, you know, politics, but you don't have to make it hard. We'll do it again tomorrow. As usual, we got you over the hump. Night, night, Jack. This 
This is the Chad Benson Show.